Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some emulation on the all new Raspberry Pi 5. Now at the time of making this video, it's still really early and uh, there are some higher end emulators that we'd love to test on this, but it's just not possible right now. Either way, I've got a lot of stuff that I want to test out in this video. And if you're not familiar with the new Pi 5, basically we've got a much faster Pi than the Raspberry Pi 4. This is a quad core Cortex A76 CPU running at 2.4 gigahertz with a new video core GPU running it up to 800 megahertz. And the Pi Foundation states that this is two to three times more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 4, which should significantly offer a nice boost in emulation performance. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into Raspberry Pi OS and test some stuff out. I was able to get uh, RetroArch up and running here. Unfortunately, not all the cores are going to work. I had to kind of pick and choose what we got, but I did get uh, GBA and N64 working with RetroArch right now. One that I really wanted to test was some Sega Saturn, but unfortunately I just couldn't get it booted up right now. Uh, we're also going to be testing out some more Dreamcast and PSP along with that N64. But real quick, as you can see, we've got that Raspberry Pi 5. It's the 8 gig model and we're not overclocked. We're sitting at 2.4 gigahertz. In order to get a few of these apps installed, I just use Pi Apps. Really awesome application here. It's basically a app store. So we can go to games here. Even we've got Doom 3 that we can download and you can do the demo or you can replace the files with your own Doom 3 files and get the full game. Uh, Minecraft Bedrock, we've got the PSP emulator. And from tools, we can actually go and install PyKiss really easily. If you're not familiar with PyKiss, basically we've got access to a lot of these emulators. But with the Pi 5, at least at the time of making this video, majority of this stuff doesn't work. And it comes down to the Pi 5 having a new CPU and GPU, but I'm sure in the future a lot of this stuff will be working. I was able to get DuckStation, the PS1 emulator, up and running here, the standalone version. Uh, one that doesn't work is the Dolphin emulator. I've tried absolutely everything, along with EtherSX2. So I just can't get these to boot. But let's go ahead and check out RetroArch. So from games here, it does take a second to boot up. I had to compile this version from source and I did go through and manually install a bunch of different cores trying to test out some stuff, but it was really hit or miss. I was able to get uh, Moopin64 next up and running here. I've also got GBA and uh, PCSX Rearm. The Sega Saturn emulator or the Sega Saturn core here just won't work and there was a bunch of other stuff that just wouldn't boot up. But we're going to just test out some GBA real quick and then we'll move on to some N64 because what we have running right now actually works amazingly on the Pi 5. Okay, so first up we've got some Game Boy Advance and it's definitely not the hardest emulator to run. It's just one that I could get working right now on the Pi 5 given that it's really early. We've got Sonic Advance 3 running at full speed. FPS is up in the top right hand corner. And when it comes to the lower end emulators or the easier to emulate games, the Pi 5 is not going to have an issue just like the Pi 4. I mean, we got some really great performance with the Pi 4 and we're just working with a better CPU and GPU here. But one area the Pi 4 still struggles in is N64 emulation. And again, I do have to mention it, it's still early for the Pi 5, but this N64 emulation we're seeing here is really awesome. More optimizations will come. This is Rogue Squadron and I'm using Moopin64 next. I tried the parallel core just to see if we could get a little better performance in the next game we're going to take a look at but it just kept booting me out of retro arch it actually kept crashing retro arch so yeah definitely need some work but this is some really promising performance next up we've got goldeneye 007 and i probably could have went through and lowered the resolution here just to get a little better performance but I just left it at the stock resolution to see what would happen, and it's really not that bad. Now, of course, when we turn the corner up here, it's going to really dip down. The performance I'm seeing here with at least 007 GoldenEye is kind of on par with the uh, Rock Chip 3399, which is a chip that's definitely been on the market for a long time. But I think we're going to get some full speed N64 emulation on the Pi 5 as soon as more developers get this in their hands. So yeah, it's definitely looking really promising for N64 on the Raspberry Pi 5, but the next thing I wanted to test out was some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. I did try the Flycast core with the RetroArch, but it wouldn't work for me. So here we have Dreamcast, and this is actually an older version, 
It works great with the Raspberry Pi 5. And uh, in my initial first look video at the Pi 5, we did test out a couple games, but we'll go with a few different ones here. So far so good with Dreamcast emulation on the Pi 5. I was actually really surprised that it worked right out of the box. I just downloaded it from the ReDream website. It comes with its own Mesa driver, and I actually didn't think it was going to boot up, you know, given that we have a whole new GPU here. But as you can see, it works great. And of course, you know I had to test out some Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'll just let this play out and then we'll move over to some PSP emulation. Alright, for this, we're going to be using the standalone version of PPSSPP. Now I did try to compile a newer version, but unfortunately this is the only one that I can get to work and we don't have Vulkan support with this version of PPSSPP, so we're relying on OpenGL right now, but we've already been seeing some really great performance with PSP emulation on the Pi 5, and it will increase once we get Vulkan, or even just some more optimizations for this new chipset. Here's Ridge Racer, we're at 2x resolution, no hacks on, I don't have any kind of frame skip going or anything like that, FPS is up in the top right hand corner. And yeah, I wouldn't mind playing this all day. I think it looks pretty good here, even just at 2x resolution. I went up to 3x and had a few dips, especially when there were a lot of cars on screen. And this is one of those games where there's always going to be a lot of cars on screen. Next up, we've got Ratchet and Clank. And with this one, we could go up to 3x resolution. This is one of those games that natively ran at 30 FPS on the PSP. Up in the top right hand corner, you can see we're still running at 30. Now there are hacks to allow this to run at 60, but it's still really playable like this. And being able to go up to 3x on the Pi 5 is really cool. Here's Dissidia, and this is another one of those PSP games that ran at 30 FPS. But with this one, I just couldn't do 3x yet. I had to go back down to 2x, still a lot better than running at that native resolution on this larger display, but obviously there's one game that really gives the Raspberry Pi trouble, and that's going to be God of War Chains of Olympus. And here it is at 1x resolution, again OpenGL back in, it's doing a lot better than it ever did on the Raspberry Pi 4, but we do get some dips. You'll see it start to dip in just a second. Now at the very beginning of this game, it was good to go. There weren't as many characters on screen. We had a steady 60, but you can see it dips down and then kind of goes right back up. Still, with it being so early, definitely looks like we've got a nice little emulation upgrade with the Pi 5 also. So far, not looking bad at all when it comes to emulation on the Pi 5, but it's only going to get better from here. Now, at the time of making this video, this was just announced yesterday, and not a lot of people have gotten their hands on it. It's up for pre-order. You can pick it up in October, and as soon as more developers get the Raspberry Pi 5, I believe we're going to see some amazing stuff on the Raspberry Pi 5. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. As soon as I have more updates, I will make another one. I definitely want to test out some GameCube. I'd love to test out Wii, even some PS2 here. But right now, it's just pretty much impossible, at least for me. I tried compiling everything. It just wouldn't work out for this new chipset. Now, if you're interested in seeing what the Pi 5 can do, I did my first look video. I'll leave a link for that down below. And if you want to learn a little more or maybe pick one of these up, I'll also leave some links to the official Raspberry Pi store. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.